Hey everyone, I'm Steve and I'm back in the shop at the wood turning store. And in this video, I will do a follow up to the last video I just published, which is how to uh, quickly and easily turn an acrylic or resin blank, such as a pen blank. Uh, in this video, we're going to show how to sand it, polish it and get it to uh, a high gloss uh, shine in no time at all. <clears throat> so before we get started, this is the blank that I've turned in the last video. You can see I just used a um, sharp roughing gouge. There's no tear out. There's nothing here at all. One, one thing I do see is that I have a little bit left of the uh, mold release. So I'm going to take a second or two. And for those of you that didn't see the first video, uh, I'll just show you how I take a quick skim cut and get rid of this. Uh, again, this is our record power cam back, which does a great job of getting uh, all of the plastic and dust away from me in a hurry and sucked away and into the vacuum. I'm using uh, a, a jet remote control switch, which is nice. And I'll grab a sharp roughing gouge over here. Again, it's a hurricane, hurricane one and a quarter inch roughing gouge, freshly sharpened to about a 35 degree angle. I have my robust American Beauty on the fastest speed I can, which is in the high range. 3000 RPM and we'll start that up. Using the sharp roughing gouge and my finger down here on the tool wrist as a guide, I will run straight across. I'll take a look at what I just did. Just a little bit more to go. I should have taken two passes actually to save time. So do it again. You can see I'm getting nice ribbons of shavings of acrylic. No chippiness, no tear out. I forgot to turn on the cam back. I do that often. So I'll turn that on again and just show you what the cam back does for you. All right, so that's it. Now again, you see really I have a very, very smooth finish, no tear out. And now I'll get ready for sanding. So what I'll do is I'll move my tool rest out of the way, move my banjo out of the way, take the tool rest out of the way. I'll push the cam back away and I'll take my air hose. And get the lathe bed as clean as I possibly can get it. So I've been turning for a few decades and being an engineer, I'm always looking for a technique or a process that will make uh, number one, the end result better. And number two, uh, the whole process easier, quicker and simpler. So the system that I've come up with for uh, sanding and polishing acrylic blanks uses a wet dry sandpaper, typically what you might find in the automotive industry. Uh, we sell this as a hurricane product. It's made for us in Sweden. Um, and we offer it in sheets, full size sheets, which in this case I've cut down to little strips where about, which are about as wide as a pen kit. Or uh, if you're doing other types of acrylic, we also sell it in three inch round discs. I am a real stickler about keeping this American Beauty lathe clean. We're going to do some wet sanding. I have a bucket here, which I picked up at Ikea and happens to fit has some notches on it and happens to fit perfectly over the bedways here and will probably work as well for your paramatics and other full size lathes. But before I do that, because we are going to be using water, I'm going to put down a towel here to try and protect the bed as much as possible. You spend a lot of money on your lathe and I'm a big stickler for keeping, uh, keeping that clean. So, uh, next thing is to get some water in here. I have one already filled. I'm 
So there it is. There's my tray of water. <clears throat> Going back to my sandpaper. Now looking at my finish here, you can decide what grit you want to start off at. Um, you're looking for any pits, any chips, any hollows, which you don't really have. You're looking for tool marks, and you can make a decision where you want to start. We sell it, I think, down to about 80 grit. Now, again, you don't have to start off with wet-dry down in the low ranges. I realize, I realize that the uh, wet-dry sandpaper is a little bit more expensive, so you don't need to start wet down there. But I will tell you that heat is your enemy. So most important and more important than anything else is that you need to keep the plastic blank cool. Um, if you run dry, it's very, very easy to overheat the blank and you'll actually get uh, the blank to, to, to melt and form little ridges and worse marks than you had with your tools. So um, it doesn't really cost that much <clears throat> to invest in the wet dry paper. So today I'm gonna start off at 220 grit and we'll run up to 5,000. So I'm gonna drop these into now these happen to be new. We'll let them soak for a minute. But I do reuse them. And after I've used them, I have a little dish drainer thing that I purchased at Ikea. Rinse them out, let them sit actually inside the plastic tub here, and they're ready to go for the next time. So you get definitely a few cycles out of them. Again, just letting them soak, get some water in here. Now I realize that this can be uh, potentially the most boring video you've ever watched, running through these grits of sandpaper. So we'll, we'll do it. I'll try and talk through it. And if we need to speed up the video along the way, we'll do that. Again, in order to make this as quick as possible, I'm gonna keep these in order. They're all arranged in order from 220 grit up to 5,000. I'll let them hang right there. Okay. Now, as far as the lathe speed, oh, the other thing I need is a piece of uh, microfiber cloth because we are going to wipe down the blank between every grit. You don't want any residue from the previous grit carrying over to the next one. And for speed, I was uh, turning at the max speed of about 3,000. For sanding, I'm going to go lower. I'm right here at about 1,500. And you may think that that's high, but for wet dry, again, as long as you keep it cool, it works and you should be fine. I may even take it up higher. Okay, so here I go. I'm starting with 220 grit. Now, it's important that uh, you're very careful when you hold the sandpaper. You, you run the potential of running the sandpaper around and catching and you definitely don't want to wrap it around your finger. So I'm going to do it, maybe not the way I always do it, but I realize you want to see it in the camera, so I'm going to do it like this, hoping that you can see it. I'll keep it nice and wet. Moving back and forth, creating a slurry. Now the first grits are probably the most important because that's where you're getting rid of any tool marks, anything like that. So I'll stop here. Again, I'm refreshing the refreshing the water over the sandpaper as I go along. I'll stop here. I'll wipe down the blank. And again, I'm looking for any tool marks, anything in here that will stay in here if I don't get them out now as I go to the higher grits. And that looks, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna leave this in the water and I'll move along to 320 and I'll try and move this quickly for you. I feel comfortable that everything's running cool. I'm gonna turn the speed up now to about 2000. Keeping it wet, keeping it clean. I'm sorry, not 2000, 320, made a mistake there. So I went from 220 to 320, stop the lathe. Be careful with the microfiber. If you touch it with the lathe spinning, you're much better off waiting for the lathe to stop. That looks good. And I'll cycle through the grits again. Here's 400. I'm 
I feel good about that. And to keep things moving, I'm going to be very careful with my microfiber, not wrapping it around my finger because it potentially can get caught. We don't want that. Now I'm up to 600. Cleaning the sandpaper. It's very important to wipe it down between grits because you don't want any slurry, any grit from the coarser grain to hang around as you're moving through the finer grits. So now I'm at 800. Rinse. So you're already starting to see a little bit of a sheen. We'll take it up to 1200. And the most important message that I'm trying to get across here is that this blank is staying cool. Before I settled in on this technique, I was using the grids dry. And if you weren't careful, particularly if you were running up at a speed like this, 2000 RPM, very, very easy to overheat. And the next thing you know, you've melted the plastic, you got some ridges and back to 180 grit you go. So now I'm at 1500. Whoop. That's what can happen. That was not intentional. So let's explain what can happen. So that was not intentional. Good that we caught that. I actually was a little bit careless and I let this wrap around and it grabbed the sandpaper and took it with me. So it took it away from me. So that's exactly why you don't want to wrap the sandpaper around your fingers. And again, the same thing can happen with the cloth. So you train yourself to be ready to obviously not have it wrapped around your fingers and to let go if it starts, if it starts to pull away from you. If I weren't doing this for the camera, I'd probably come around here like this. So I have a little bit more control of the tailpiece. What happened there is the tailpiece wrapped around and then caught and took it away. Okay, so that was 2,000. We'll go two more grits. All right, so this is 3,000. I'll reach around here. Putting a little bit of pressure, just light pressure. You can see the slurry there. Most important thing is the blank is as cool as can be. Very, very careful holding this, not wrapping around my finger. I probably said that five times and that's how important it is. Here we are now at 5,000. All right, so that takes us through to about 5,000. So I can see no visible marks at all. We still don't have ourselves up to a super polish. So we can do two things. We can keep this going a few different ways. You can continue with some of the super fine polishing pads like we sell our brand, which is called Hurricane Super Mesh. Of course, there's micro mesh out there. You can take that up to about 15,000. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to use a, a typical automotive compound, polishing compound. In this particular case, it's one that I have from Merca. What I'll do is I will put some, put a dab of it on a clean microfiber cloth. You want to, you want to start off with a clean cloth because this, again, you don't want to mix grits of different polishing compounds if you decide to go with uh, even a grit higher than this. This is going to sling. So I'm going to stand off to the side. I'm going to start the lathe off at about 
1500, stand aside, get a coating on there, and then I can take the speed up. Again, I'm being super careful, super careful with my hands around this microfiber cloth. I don't in any way want to catch it, have it wrap around. I'll try some more. Now this particular one happens to be uh, Merca Polar Shine number 10. There are lots of others that you can use. Um, Meguiar's makes good stuff. 3M makes great stuff. Uh, hopefully we'll establish a relationship with one of those vendors and make it available in uh, reasonable sizes on our website. All right, so now I'm at about 3,000. And let's see what we look like. So that is a really nice finish. Hopefully you can see right in here, right in here, some of that iridescence of the mica powder shining through. And that's really all it takes. So I hope that was helpful. Again, the key to uh, sanding and polishing acrylic or resin blanks is the material has to stay cool. There's no better way to do that than with water and wet dry sandpaper. Uh, wet dry sandpaper commercially can only get you to about 5,000, which isn't enough to put a super shine on it. So above 5,000, you'll switch over to an automotive type of polish of your choice. Uh, there are lots of them out there, like I said, Merca, Meguiar's, 3M, and so on. Uh, that's it. I hope that was helpful. This is the follow-up to the first video on how to turn these blanks. So if you haven't seen that, go back and check that out. And thanks again for watching.